Welcome to the Hope, Health, and Healing Podcast. I am Michelle Hannah Fields, and I am your host for episode 17, where I am joined by my friend, Jeremy Northington. Jeremy shares about his journey of faith. He was raised in church. He had a grandfather who was a retired Methodist minister, so he had a great foundation of faith. But how he strayed from the faith during his later teenage years and just the journey that he went on walking through uh, a life of addiction and compromise on into a life of surrender in his adulthood and what it has looked like for God to restore what the enemy tried to take from him. He also shares what his ministry is like. He saw God's hand of protection through a robbery and also through a motorcycle accident, which should have taken his life. He also shares as he has given his life to Christ in full surrender, what he has seen God do in his life, how God has really restored relationships for him and he shares an incredible miracle around the birth of his son joshua sit back relax with a cup of coffee or the beverage of your choice and let jeremy's story inspire and encourage you today So today I'm joined by my friend Jeremy Northington, and I always like to say how I know people. Um, So I met you at Evangel. It's been Mm -hmm. a long time. So I started Evangel probably in February of 2014. Okay. And I started playing the bass at night, um, and we actually sat on the same side of the church on Sunday nights. I sit on the opposite side on Sunday mornings. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) And I just, I noticed you a few times in the altar, just your heart for the Lord. Lord, yeah. and that touched me so much yeah. and then i got to know you and now i serve on the board of directors with you so thank yeah. you for being a guest yeah today. thank you michelle and before we get started i just wanted to say thank you um i've walked similarly i've watched your walk from afar um and then now as i've get, got to know you just thank you for all that you do for our king like thank just you. the way you serve the lord in your heart it inspires me and i see i see jesus in your life so thank you and thanks for having me on yeah so we'll get started um today just kind of um talking about your journey of faith and if if somebody said who is jeremy what would you tell them yeah so um i've been i've been in columbus since i was about five years old um i was born in saint petersburg florida um, and my father, he was in the construction business, and he moved us up um, to Columbus so like when I was about five. And it's strange, my I'm in the construction business, and my brother, we both have businesses, oh, so we kind of awesome. followed in our dad's yeah. footsteps. But yeah, so I've been here, so I call Columbus my, my home. Um, I am I'm a business owner. I um, am a husband. Uh, my wife is named Teresa, and Lord bless me with her. And then we have a five-year-old child named Joshua. Yeah, And so that's just a little bit about me. Yeah, awesome. Well, you know, what was your life like growing up? Um, did, were you a, a, a sports star in high school? What was kind of your thing uh, growing up? You know, not really a sports star. I did. I enjoyed and played sports. Um, you know, I always, I was always one that I've always wanted people to like me. I've always been a people pleaser. Mm-hmm. And so growing up, I just kind of flocked to different um, you know, different groups of people, and um, yeah, that's that's kind of kind of it. Mm-hmm. Did you have any? What was your biggest hobby when you were growing so up? So I was I love hanging with my dad. So mm-hmm. my dad was an outdoorsman, mm-hmm. and so we I grew up fishing mm-hmm. um, and hunting, just spending time in the outdoors. Some of my favorite childhood memories um, growing up was whenever school let out, we would stay in town for one week. And then my grandparents, they lived on a big lake up in North Carolina. And so we would go there. My brother, they'd pack my brother and I up. They would send us there for the summer. And uh, for the first week, uh, my granddad, he was a retired uh, Methodist minister. Oh, wow. And he was, uh, he was an amazing man, but he believed in hard work. <laughs> so for the first week or two, we did all of granddaddy's chores that he needed help with throughout the year. He'd save them. And so yeah. 
That could be anything from digging ditches to cutting trees to hauling grass piles, whatever it was. But then after that first week, we spent the rest of the summer on the lake, just yeah. skiing and fishing. And mm -hmm. so I just really enjoyed the outdoors yeah. and just so, yeah. So I love just hanging with my dad, whatever he was into. Mm -hmm. I was kind of into also. Yeah. Are you still a big outdoorsman? I do. Yeah. So my my hobbies have kind of shifted. Now I've, I started playing golf probably 10 or 15 years mm -hmm. ago and I just fell in love with golf mm -hmm. and so now if I get an afternoon I'd rather probably go play golf than go fishing unless I can take my son he's yeah. just now getting into fishing and stuff yeah. like that so when we're hanging we may do something yeah. you know that is more suitable to, for, for his age but uh, yeah so I, I do pl I, some outdoors but I really enjoy playing golf yeah yeah, yeah. Well, that's good and and now you have that opportunity to pour into your son's life like your dad poured oh into yeah yours. Michelle like that is like and, and you know and that's like I'll share some of my story but like that's my the one thing I prayed I prayed over him when he was in his mother's womb and I just pray my prayer for Joshua is that he never has a season where he's not walking with the Lord mm -hmm. and um, to your point it's just incredible mm -hmm. just to see just how he's maturing like he's he's only five years old but he's already asked me about being baptized so we yeah. had that conversation i'm still not sure he fully grasped the whole mm -hmm. concept but it's just amazing just to watch you know watch god working in his life at yeah. such a young age yeah that he is and that's such an answer to prayer amen and, you know even you know, there's a scripture that that comes to my mind that says train up a child in the yes. way you should go and when he's old he'll not depart from yes. it and that does not you know some people would think that means that your child is never going to stray right but that's not what that means that means that even if your child strays that the way that you brought them up is going to stay with them. Yes. Like, you cannot run right. from what you know. That's right. And so, you know, raising your child up, like, even if they go their own way, like, scriptures they heard as a child, that it's not going to depart from them. That's They're right. always going to know wow. that in their heart, um, what they know to do, the right things yes. that they know to do. Yes. It's not going to depart from them. They may not be actively doing them, but it's not going to depart from them. Yes, that's so true. And I, I am a living testimony of that. Mm -hmm. I am the quintessential prodigal. I, um, we started going to church. Um, we started going to church when I was probably about 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so at Evangel, and I sat under some incredible pastors, some incredible youth leaders, children's pastors, senior pastors, and for whatever reason, Michelle, whenever I got old enough to have my own will and my own money and transportation and freedom, I, I did. I strayed away. Mm -hmm. um, but just to your point, there was always something in me, no matter what I was doing, that always just reminded me, just that gentle nudge, like, hey, this isn't for you. And when I came back to the Lord, um, just like you said, everything that had been deposited in me, it was just, it burst forth. Like, yeah. just in a very, you know, the Bible says that he'll restore the years, the locusts and the canker worm destroyed. Yeah. And, and that's what happened in my life. It was mm -hmm. just restoration. And, yeah. uh, you know, everything that had been all that seed that had been sowed there mm -hmm. was it was there it yeah. was there one of the things and i i know i've shared this before um probably even on a sunday night but it was years ago um i know it was on a sunday morning one time but it's something that really just has stuck with me so i grew up in church my whole life and i never strayed i you know i haven't always served him perfectly right. or done everything i knew to do but there was for many years i never studied the bible on my own and i was praying once i started doing that <laughs> and i was grieving the time that i didn't yes and you know it wasn't so much for me, it was for who I could have impacted right. and how I could have helped other people had I known the word. Wow. And the Lord said to me, I'm not, I don't worry about that. I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about where you are today and yes. what you're doing today. And I'll redeem that time for you. Amen. And so I think, you know, he redeems that time, yes. that time that you had strayed. Like he's not concerned about that. He was only concerned with the day you came back. Yes. You yes. know, and then he redeems all that other time. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good word. What, um, so, you know, when you strayed, like, do you know, like, a pivotal moment that just really um, took you down that path? You know, I think it, a lot of it came from, um, you know, there was some history of 
addiction and just some, you know, some sin um, that kind of ran through my family line. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of growing up, seeing some of that, I think it really just produced in me just like I really wanted people to accept me and like me and you know for whatever I was doing for people to be happy around me and so I just easily fell, fell into a crowd that you know and I think it's so key just to, to know who your children are hanging around and those type things but I found a group of people who accepted me I just never really felt as a youth I just didn't for whatever reason and I, I know I know it wasn't the people at the church mm -hmm. I know that their hearts are full of love and but just the enemy had me convinced that I didn't fit in there mm -hmm. and I just found a group of people at the school I was going to that were doing some crazy stuff but they accepted me and they took me in and um you know, before you know, I love what Pastor Paul says that sin will take you farther than you're willing to go, keep you there longer than you're willing to stay, and cost you more than you're willing to pay. And that's what happened to me. I just slowly, what happened is, you know, when the Holy Spirit, and it was the Holy Spirit, people say conscience, Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit, you know, I would just try, I would silence that voice in me and say, hey, Jeremy, this isn't okay. And then once you, you become numb, you know, once you keep saying yes to the sin and no to the Lord, and then before you know it, you look and you're in this place and it doesn't look anything like what you wanted to look. And I've, mm -hmm. you know, I fell into, you know, I was addicted to all kind of crazy stuff and just a lot of crazy behaviors. And, you know, you know, the Lord, it was incredible when I gave my heart to the Lord fully. So I grew up, so growing up in the church, there had been times, Michelle, where I had made a decision for Jesus. I can remember going back to church in my teens and my early 20s where I had that altar confession and I went, you know, I mean, tears and all and like, okay, Lord, I'm yours. And, you know, I'm reminded by the parable of the sower. So even with that, making that, you know, making that confession of faith in the Lord, like I wasn't being discipled. And so I would run with him for like maybe six months or something mm -hmm. like that. Like I would try, but then, mm -hmm. you know, your old friends are calling and stuff like that. And so, you know, there were periods where I, I gave my heart to the Lord and I meant it, but I just didn't have that endurance in the faith. Mm -hmm. And then so I made him, I wanted to, what it was, is I wanted him to be my savior, but I really, I wasn't ready to make him my Lord and let him lord over my life and mm. serve him yeah. and so um you know when i finally in 2016 is when i finally after you know backsliding multiple times in 2016 i got to the point of just being so on the outside if you looked at my life you would say hey he's got a good life he's got a business he's doing well but i was broken and i was I mean, I'm not, I was honestly like I was close just to being suicidal. Like I was just carrying a burden of the world. I was going through some some litigation in my business, and like the weight of the world was on my shoulders. And it was um, it was kind of near the time that the movie War Room came out. My wife took me; to, she made me go. Well, I didn't I didn't want to go watch it, but we went and watched it. And then you know, shortly after that, I remember. Um, just going into a closet one night and I was just like God if you can take this m this mess of a life that I have like I will serve you for the rest of my life I will make you my Lord you know mm -hmm. and uh, I can just remember I hear people say you know like they felt like the you know weight came off I literally felt like weights come off of my body mm -hmm. and I came out of that room and uh, my life is my out of that closet my life's never been the same my wife and I uh, she wasn't my wife at the time we were living together and I immediately said, babe, one of us has to get out of this house. Like, I'm going to, like, I'm, I'm walking with Jesus. Like, I'm not, I'm done. I, li I was living, prior to that, I was living a life of compromise. Mm -hmm. And I just said, I'm not, I'm not compromising anymore. Mm -hmm. That's powerful, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, you know, there's so, so many different directions that I can go there. But, you know, I, I think one of the things is, is what you were saying, the, your friends and, still there's that tug of war yes I guess you know you're the bible says that the flesh is willing i mean this flesh the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak yes. and so you're in that moment where you're surrendering your heart to god you're repenting and you know like you said there was still that that one little place of surrender that you wanted you still wanted control of that yes. um and so i think you do have to kind of you know you have to hit rock bottom and rock bottom is different for everybody That's right. and so you have to get to that place where the weight 
of your sin and the weight of your lifestyle and the weight of compromise is heavier than what your cross would be. Yes. And, you know, for everybody, that's different. That looks different. And so, you know, one of the things I think, um, you know, talk about like in the, the height of your addiction and just living that lifestyle, like did you ever see glimpses of God in that time where it was like, what am I doing? Yeah, for sure. You know, I can remember, you know, I can remember, you know, I was always like, even though I was partying, like I was always a party pooper. Like I was always paranoid because deep down inside, I knew that I, I was in a sinful yeah. lifestyle and I knew that it was wrong. And so I can just remember like there before I, before I moved out of my parents' home, like I can remember like sneaking in my parents' home and to hear my mom like in her bedroom just crying out from for my soul i'm coming in high and she's in her bedroom crying out in the holy spirit for my soul and i mean just like moments like that you know just were um it'll sober you up real quick and um so yeah like i can remember you know there was a i I didn't even when we knew i was going to talk to you i didn't even think about this but there was a time where i was into some stuff that i shouldn't have been into and i got robbed and uh, and the guy, you know, come to find out, like I f- found out the next day that they had planned on shooting me. Um, mm-hmm. And thank God that you know he was that he was there and he protected mm-hmm. me. And so I just got robbed. I didn't, obviously I didn't get shot. Thank the Lord for that. But there were so many times I, you know, d- kind of during that time I had a crazy motorcycle wreck too, where I should have lost my life. And the Lord saved me mm-hmm. from that. So there are definitely times in my addiction, in my sinful lifestyle, that God's grace was still there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think looking back, we, we can see those things. And, you know, John 10.10 10 says the thief comes to kill, steal, yes. and to destroy. You know, he'll steal from you. He'll steal your joy. He'll steal your peace. He'll steal your influence. Yes. He'll try to kill you. Um, yes. But just like Job, God was like, you can take everything away from him, but don't touch his life. Yes. You know, and so I believe that there are times the enemy, he has destined to take you out yes. and God intervenes. He's yes. like, uh, uh, no, Absolutely. <laughs> you can't you can't take him out yes. yet. I've got plans That's for this right. boy right here. That's right. You can't take him out and he'll destroy. He'll destroy your influence. He'll destroy the things that you're working towards. Yep. He'll destroy your faith. He'll destroy, you know, those yep. things in you. Um, but God has said that Christ came to give us life and give it to us abundantly. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, you know, I I love that you brought that out, that you can look back and you can see, well, you know, God protected me there. Yes. Um, and, and how he guided you. What do you feel like was, um, like, did you walk through um, anything and just think, like, there's got to be more? Yeah, you know, uh, I think the Bible talks about, you know, sin and its fleeting pleasures. And, you know, while I was in that lifestyle, you know, it was fun in the night. But the problem is the next morning you got to wake up and look yourself in the mirror. And I can just remember a bunch of those times just like, you know, looking at myself in the mirror is like, Jeremy, what are you doing? You know, mm-hmm. so and, you know, I now seeing on this side of it and walk in living that abundant life that the Bible mm-hmm. promises like looking back like I was so blinded but you know I believe there's so many people out there that are in addiction and in sin and they're just the enemy just has them blinded mm-hmm. um, and I think I think that's so key why you know just like for me to have a praying mom and a grand an incredible grandmother who was a woman of God my grandfather you know mm-hmm. I can remember her because you know I started kind of going downhill in high school and I, it's funny, she like she would write me letters. My grandma was big on handwriting letters. Mm-hmm. And uh, so she was a preacher's wife, and uh, she was the most loving, kind, compassionate person I ever met. But she also was very direct, and she was going to let you know when you were yeah. getting out of line. And just recently, I had an old Bible, my teenage, the Bible I had as a teenager that my mom gave me, had some letters stuck in there from my grandma. And, you know, she would just, where she was just kind of outlining, Jeremy, this is where you're going wrong, you know, mm-hmm. get back. But just moments like that, like just getting a letter from grandma you know there were many times where you know I I absolutely but you know I was just so deep in my addiction Mm -hmm. that you know that like 
that was the loudest voice in my head at the time unfortunately mm -hmm. you know and so um yeah yeah and i think going back to one of the things you said in the beginning you said the more that you engage in sin the less you listen to the holy spirit yes. You know, I think the more that we reject what the Holy Spirit says, he's going to get quieter and quieter. The world gets louder and louder. Absolutely. And it's exponential. So That's as right. this gets louder and this gets quieter, like there's so disparaging, uh, yes. you know, ways between those two that then it's so very hard to hear the yes. Holy Spirit. Yes. But he can still penetrate your heart. Yes. And so in those moments, like getting a letter from your grandmother or walking in and hearing your mom praying, that was the Holy Spirit. Yes. And, and speaking to you Absolutely. in a way you could understand and hear. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. What, um, so, you know, growing up in that and you had that foundation of faith, um, what did it feel like when you did look yourself in the mirror um like what were some of the thoughts that came to your mind when you're standing there and, and you know what's going on and and you know where you are like what are some of those thoughts and and even talking about being at the point of suicide yeah. like how how did you reach that point you know i had i had a distorted i had a distorted view of god I just felt like he was very angry at me and that he hated me, you know, and I just, I don't know. I just felt I was ashamed. Um, I had a ton of guilt. And, you know, now I know that, you know, Jesus told his disciples, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. But I didn't know that then. I had, you know, I could, I was like I was compartmentalizing, you know, Jesus over here. I can see where he could possibly be compassionate and forgive me. But then God, I just had him pictured as just an angry God that was ready to mm -hmm pour out judgment on me mm -hmm. you know and so um i just had a lot of uh i was a very i was just had a lot of guilt and shame and i even dealt with that you know even sometimes still now even the devil will whisper to me you know i had a hard time because all the crazy stuff that i did i had a hard time even after i came to the lord just allowing myself to, to release that you know but you know that's not my inheritance guilt mm -hmm. shame and condemnation that's mm -hmm. from the enemy yeah you know and conviction is from the holy spirit and when he convicts you know i'm definitely responsive to mm -hmm. you know to ask him for forgiveness but i had a hard time letting a lot of that go because i did just so much crazy stuff you know mm -hmm. so outside of of who I am now mm -hmm. and so I really had a um but yeah so in the in those moments you know Michelle to be honest I just really felt I just felt sh just shame and guilt you know and then mm -hmm. so that results in just using more you know that's the only way I could get that to you know that voice to be quiet mm -hmm. is to use more to party more and it's mm -hmm. just it's a cycle and you know it did it, it took you know me getting so desperate you know and when I finally came back to the Lord um, when I fully surrendered in 2016, I had broken off the drugs um, much prior to that. Really, when I met my wife, um, my, fu my then fu future wife, mm -hmm. I realized that I had to get my act together. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that, and like I said, prior to that, I know it's a long, complicated story, mm -hmm. but prior to that, a couple times, I had given my heart to the Lord, you know, and meant it. Um, and, you know, some of that stuff kind of began to break off. I, so it was kind of like a, a journey. And mm -hmm. so some of it has broken off, but, you know, I was still heavily relying on alcohol, and um, some other things and so in 2016 whenever all that came to a head just the weight of that um, it was just a moment of desperation and in, in my desperation thank God that I had you know in me you know the, that biblical foundation mm -hmm. um, and I knew where to turn because I'm sure there's so many people out there that are dealing with the same things that don't have that biblical mm -hmm. you know foundation and you yeah. hear about those stories of suicide I mean it's ravaging our society mm -hmm. and um so thank god that you know i just think it's so important you know for you for especially parents you know to, to continue you know even if their kids are rebelling i was even though i was rebelling you know there was something down inside of me it was still every conversation my mom or dad had with me you know it's it impacted me you know there was mm -hmm. there was something there was something there there was you know mm -hmm. and then you know 
how quickly the, you know the Bible says that those are forgiven so much, love so much. I think that's why now I have such a heart for ministering to people is that you know how quickly a life can be flipped. You know, I went from mm -hmm. darkness to light, and then mm -hmm. when I went to light, man, like I wanted all of God I could get. Yeah. Like I wanted everything. Like, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and you know, talking about that, the just the darkness and and the you know the weight of the world that will lead you to wanting to take your own life yeah. because you don't see any other way out right and you know i think the enemy clouds your mind to the point to where you think everybody would be better off if i went here yes like i'm just a th i'm i'm a disgrace and and i'm not trying to put words in your mouth but you know i feel like when you walk through something so hard and you have that shame and that guilt. The enemy says you're a disgrace to your family. You're a disappointment. And I didn't face that. I faced some other things. And that's what he was telling me. Yes. <laughs> you know, was that, you know, I walked through divorce and I didn't believe in it. Yeah. But what the enemy told me was you're going to be a disgrace to your family. Absolutely. You're going to be a disappointment. Yep. And so I wrestled with that and wrestled with that and wrestled with that. And in the end, I wasn't. <laughs> exactly. You know, it was like that was a lie from the enemy that I was partnering with. That's right. <laughs> and so, you know, I think what happens is when you have that foundation of faith, the enemy's going to come in and say, Jeremy, this, you know, there is no hope. Like, you just need to end your life because you'll never get out of this mess. You're just, you know, you're always going to be this way. But there, then I believe that there is that little voice that says, no, that's not true. That's right. And that comes from that biblical foundation. Yes. That comes from deep down within knowing the truth. Yes. And even though the truth may be very quiet because the noise of the world is very loud, God lets you hear that little voice of truth echoing in your heart. Yes. And keeps you from doing that. That's right. Um, yeah. You know, what would you say to somebody today who maybe is walking through that darkness that is considering taking their own life? What would you say to them? If you had one chance to say something to them. I would tell them that, man, God has such an incredible plan for your life and you're valuable you're not a failure and in an instant he can change every circumstance he can redeem everything that's lost he can liberate every you know i was so bound i was bound in chains and in just you know a moment you know all that can change mm -hmm. so i would just tell them that there is hope in the gospel that mm -hmm. god loves them he's not mad at them he gave his son Mm -hmm. so that they could be redeemed he gave his mm -hmm. very best and you know i would just i would encourage them man like this this life on the other side of it is, is it is abundant i'm living mm -hmm. i'm living proof that it is abundant life mm -hmm. yeah that's so powerful talk about um you know now you're you're married um you and Teresa. you're building a beautiful life together what happened in that moment of your surrender and you went to her and you said one of us has to leave. I've got to go. We can't live in this anymore. Yeah. Like, talk about, because, you know, if you've been living together, that could be a blow for her, you know, and a life change for her. Right. Talk about what that looked like for you both to walk through that sure. and how God kept your relationship intact. Yeah. You know, um, in the in the very beginning, so she, she kind of is a similar story to me. Not the addiction and all the crazy stuff. I was just super hard-headed. She was <laughs> a lot better than me in that fashion. But she grew up um, in a Baptist church, you know, attended periodically. So she had some biblical foundation there. Mm -hmm. And so in the beginning, she didn't quite know, you know, what was happening. You know, I was telling her, you know, all this, I'm going, you know, this is what I'm doing. You know, I'm living for the Lord now. And so, but she, uh, she's an amazing wife and she was she was understanding so she's actually the one that moved out so mm -hmm. she moved back into her parents home and um it's incredible that the lord you know he used my story to really um to reach her mm -hmm. and um because you know she she's really following the lord now and she 
you know, tells me she's like, you know, I didn't, she knew, she had a knowledge of the Lord, but not a personal relationship. Mm -hmm. And so, but yeah, she was so, she was amazing through the process um, and really supported me in what I was doing. She didn't quite, I think she was kind of, because I wasn't, prior to coming to the Lord, I don't think I was a very good, I wasn't a very good boyfriend or partner, like, um, I just was very lucky that she put up with a lot of stuff that I put her through. Um, and but now our, our marriage is, is it's incredible, you know, with God at the center of it and um a, amazing miracle. So we whenever so we had experienced some miscarriages prior to us to us being married. Mm -hmm. Um and you know, we desired to have a child and we thought that that might not be possible for us just because of we've you know, just some stuff that was going on and multiple miscarriages and so we were both serving the Lord. Joshua was born in two thousand eighteen. So kinda you know, quickly after we got married. We got ma I got saved, fully, fully saved and surrendered mm -hmm. in February. And in September we got married, and then shortly after that we were we were pregnant again, and um, we just kind of have a fear that you know this one's going to end the same way, you know, and uh, so we were going along, and about I want to say like around the 20 week mark, like everything was going good, like the baby had a heartbeat, which we had suffered some of that where the baby didn't have a heartbeat and so she miscarried, but um, everything was going good, and we went in for just a routine you know checkup and. I could tell when the ultrasound tech was doing her thing that, you know, something was wrong. And uh, I was like, oh, what's going on? And so she said, oh, you know, well, the doctor will explain. And I remember the doctor coming in and he's like, well, Teresa, you know, your ambiotic fluid is, uh, there's not enough. Like it's cr a critical low level. And so we're probably going to have to try to deliver the baby super premature. Um, he's like, and you know, to be honest with you, it's probably the child, you know, the baby's probably not going to survive, but this is what I want you to do. I want you to go down to the hospital to the, uh, to NICU and they're going to give you, uh, some kind of steroid. I want you to get familiar with the area. They're going to give you some steroid shots. And we were just like, oh no, like we were just, we were broken. You know, I was, you know, she was at that point a really a new believer. Um, and you know, we were, uh. You know, we were we were actually going through a study on like the miracle working power of God, and we were just like, "Oh, you got to be kidding me!" But uh, so we were, we asked, uh, we had some church, we had some believers that were friends, and we asked them to pray over us, and we were really praying and seeking, and so they put her on where she had to go and get an ultrasound. I think every day, it was either day or every other every other day, just because at a certain level when there's not enough fluid, they were going to make the baby deliver and just take the chance with it, <laughs> and. Um, so I remember going through that, and um, there was like two weeks where it, it didn't really change. It went down a little bit more, um, but man, we were just believing God for a miracle, and I think this is a testimony of how good God is, and when you put your marriage under His authority, like what can happen, but so I remember going back for an appointment. It's been like two weeks. She was super depressed through the process, you know I mean? Mm -hmm. She was, this is the most broken I've ever seen her, and um, I remember going in for one of the appointments, and the ultra, the, at this point, we had become friends with the, the ultra uh, sound tech, yeah. and I remember her doing her little thing and looking at us and just like almost just smiling and like almost tears, mm -hmm. and I was like, what's going on? And she's like, like your stuff, your fluid level is completely normal. Actually, there's more in there than there needs to be. Wow. Like God touched Teresa's womb yeah. and and healed her. Yeah. And uh, Joshua, if you'd see him now, you would know he's just the healthiest yeah. little child. And that was such a faith builder for for both of us mm -hmm. to see. But I think that goes to your point of you know bringing your relationship before the Lord mm -hmm. and doing it according to His biblical principles. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, I don't know. So I kind of went off on the thing there, but no, that was so good. And and you know, I I love that because so many people that that are living together and they get saved, they don't change that one thing. Yeah. And that's so critical. Wow. And like you said, I believe that God did that miracle because of your obedience to godly principles and yes. godly living yes and you know god honors that absolutely when you honor him in your relationship he honors you in your marriage yes and i firmly believe that so yeah i, I do believe that that was a miracle he gave you out of your obedience yes. to him yes yeah that's so good and then you know just her 
even that building her faith. Yes. You know, to where this is a miracle. Like, there's no other way that could have happened. No other way. Yeah. Yeah. I can remember the doctor being just so blown away that, like, because I, I declared to him, I remember when he first told me, like, you know, I was like, under, cause like you know, I was on fire. Yeah. And I was like, I understand, I respect your medical opinion, but I just want to tell you, like, I'm believing and praying that this is what's going to happen. And I remember him looking at me, like, thinking I was kind of weird, yeah. but he was <laughs> like, you know, he was like, okay, you know, all right, Jeremy, but I'm telling you, you know, like, I'm taking the baby if it gets to this low, you know, it's yeah. like, we're, we're right there at it. Yeah. But yeah, so it was such a faith builder. And, um, you know, just in, her, in Teresa's family, we've seen some of her family, just because of our relationship with the Lord, how he's used it to reach her other, some other family members are coming to the Lord, getting mm-hmm. baptized this Sunday. Oh, wow. Um, I've had several of our family members come to me and say, Jeremy, thank you so much for how, just how you live and your walk, because because of what we're seeing in you, mm-hmm. you know, we're coming. And even some of the guys I partied with, which is mm-hmm. so crazy, um, they are coming to the Lord and go to, some of them go to our church That's and awesome. are, are getting, you know, getting saved. And I yeah. pray for them all the time. You know, yeah. I'll think of them and I'll pray of them. But yeah. it's just, it's incredible to see the guys that we are out running the streets with yeah. are now sitting around the table at the men's prayer breakfast, yeah. like talking about That's Jesus. Awesome. It's so good. Yeah, that so is good. so good. And, you know, I think, too, when you are running in those circles, the tendency is when you give your life to Christ and you're on fire, your tendency is to run back and get them. Yes. But the problem with that is you're putting yourself back in that environment. That's right. And so what I hear you saying, and I might be wrong, but <laughs> what I hear you saying is that you didn't do that. No, yeah. When I, You prayed for them. Yes. And they are watching your life from afar yes but you're not going back to them trying to bring them here that's right because it's so easy for them to pull you back down than for you to pull them up yes and so i commend you for doing what you did and just living your life before them being a light living your life in front of them as a witness and praying for them because that's what brought them in right you know and and so i think a lot of times people you're on fire you've seen the change in your life and you want that for your buddies yes you would be it would be wrong of you not to right (laughs) you know god wants us to share this gift but i think that was such wisdom on your part to say i know i can't go to that environment i'm just going to be a light and and that's what you've been yeah, that's right. Yeah, I um, you're you're exactly right, mm-hmm. and you know, um, you know, I've got an opportunity now to disciple. You know, once they're in and have a chance to disciple them. But yeah, I think it's super important what you're saying, mm-hmm. not to go back into that. And, you know, that was a big, a big change for me. Is you know, one of the big things that I did when I in 2016 when I gave my whole life to Jesus is I started getting discipled by other and so I stopped hanging out with them Mm -hmm. and I allowed myself I said hey you know just formal discipleship relationships you know there are still the three or four guys that you know I said hey you know will you disciple me will you pour into me and that's what Mm -hmm. Jesus commands us to do he doesn't command us to go and get somebody to pray our prayer which is amazing you know the you know salvation prayer changed my life but you know, he really wants to, us to be, to make disciples. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah, Matthew 28. That's right, yeah. <laughs> you know, go and make disciples. Right, exactly. And, you know, I think that's so key. And you had not just them discipling you, but they were also accountability partners that's right. for you. That's right, that's <laughs> right. And so if you had missed church, they would probably be like, hey, Jeremy, where you? Where we, where were you Sunday? <laughs> and there were some of those conversations yeah. had, and yeah. you know, and, and it's it's incredible the way, you know. I remember praying because I I, I enjoy people, mm-hmm. I love being around people. I remember when and when I first got saved for that first two months, praying, saying, God, I am lonely. Mm-hmm. Please put me around some other Christian men, you know, that I can fellowship with because yeah. God created us for community and for fellowship, and you know, I had to cut off a whole lot of people, mm-hmm. and so, but man, He was so faithful just to put people that I still talk to to this day. They, you mm-hmm. know, some of them have moved, 
but they'll still call me and just have a, just a word it's just like wow like that's the divine yeah. word like yeah. you know and so yeah, yeah absolutely yeah i love that and i love that you know now we've started this men's prayer group yes. and you know the men's ministry is getting um more in full swing now because it is so needed you know we need strong men in the church um you know for so long that it's it's been um the enemy that's what he attacks yeah is the men of the household and families and and that kind of thing and you know i think it's so powerful to see christian men coming together and supporting one another absolutely yeah mm -hmm. um yeah and i think it's as men it's easy to get isolated and think we have to try to figure out on our own and we're weak if we need one another yeah but yeah i love that um our church has a heart for just just flipping that upside down mm -hmm. and saying we are strong and we're stronger together yeah i love that yeah talk about um you know i know your mom prayed for you and you heard your mom praying yeah. for you and you know from like how has your relationship with her changed and um over that time like when you made that shift yeah um man my mom is incredible and um she tells me all the time, you know, just how proud, you know, she is of mm -hmm. me. And uh, we have a great relationship now. Um, and we, we had a good relationship then. She was very, you know, she always showed me a lot of grace, you know. And, uh, but, yeah, now um, we have a we have a, just a tremendous relationship. And uh, I just really uh, enjoy hanging with her. And, she, yeah, mm -hmm. she's great. Yeah. I know, it's, um, so... My, one of my cousins walked through addiction okay. and so my parents were pa my grandparents were pastors um his uncle was a pa i mean <laughs> my uncle his dad was a pastor okay and so you know it was always funny you talking about your grandmother sending you letters yes. and praying so <laughs> our thing was we call my grandmother monette don't let monette find out because yeah. she'll be on her knees <laughs> praying for you okay. and she'll pray you right yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so when vance would be off doing the things he shouldn't have been doing when he was doing drugs and yeah. drinking and partying and all those things you wouldn't see vance he would not come around that's how you knew <laughs> yeah that's how you knew he was not where he needed to be because you would never see him yes and so you know i know that when he would get back right you know he would start coming around and so you know one of the things i think um can happen is when you're when you're off in addiction and you're you're doing those things you know you shouldn't do you don't want to see the face of your mom yeah that's you know is praying for you right because it's a reminder yes for you yeah for me and for me you know it that, that especially held true to my dad's side you know as i shared my dad my my granddad was a was a pastor and his whole family was following the lord and i can remember just to exactly to your point when they would come in town or when you know at, at when i got into my addiction like i wanted nothing to do with them mm -hmm. i just felt just so convicted you know mm -hmm. but it's incredible you know just how the Lord has restored those relationships mm -hmm. too, and yeah. you know, now they're all like. I mean, they saw a big change. Like, what is different about you, Jeremy? Yeah. Like, you're coming up here all the time trying to hang out, and I just got a chance to share my story. And mm -hmm. uh, my grandma is with the Lord now, but she got to see me just like walking in in that. She got to meet Joshua before oh, yeah. she went to be with the that's Lord. Awesome. And uh, that's like my one regret. My my dad. Um, he passed from uh, cancer, and he never really got to see me. I just can't wait to see him in, in heaven, mm -hmm. but he never really got to see me. He was, like, walking in the fullness of what he prayed for. Yeah. Um, but I think the Bible even talks about that. Like, you might not see, you know, the yeah. fullness of what you're praying for, you know. Right. But, uh, yeah. And, you know, the, the thing is, like, his prayers live on today. That's right. Like, his prayers he prayed for you are still coming before the That's throne. Right. That's it. <laughs> it's still a sweet yes. savor to yes. the Lord. Yes. Um, and, you know, that those prayers will cover you today. Yes. Um, but, I, you know, I, I do know, you know, I, I believe that God will allow them to see, Yeah. you know, and know. That, that Jeremy's right, right. you know yeah. I mean maybe it's not that may not be scriptural but in my little pea mind yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I believe I believe God lets you get a glimpse yeah. and um, you know I, I know my grandfather he talked about having visions before and he would see saints of God so you know I believe that there is a time and space where God allows 
us down here to have communication for a purpose. Yeah. And so, you know, I believe that that there are times and, you know, maybe God has let him, you know, maybe an angel has come back and reported. Let me tell you what Jeremy did today. (laughs) You know, and so he may. But I just believe that, you know. When you get to heaven, like y'all are gonna have this big yes. time, big conversation, yeah. and he's gonna be like, "Dang, Jeremy, I've been waiting on yeah. you all these years." <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you I, got here. I, I think you're right. I mean, the Bible in Hebrews talks about the great cloud of witnesses. Yeah, and surely, you know, he's there. So yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I believe that. I believe that. You know, they they cheer us on. That's right. You know, all of our loved ones that have gone on before us yeah. cheer us on. Um, you know, I I love that, and just how that foundation was laid um you know you had marked moments in your faith and yes. what is another marked moment in your faith um i know giving your heart to the lord and the miracle of joshua yeah. do you have any other like milestone yeah. markers that- um I, I remember um so i had been saved so probably like 2017 2018 um karen from church asked me to join the prayer team and um uh, I was like keep milling it around. I was like, oh, I don't really know, you know, mm-hmm. maybe so, maybe not. But uh, I told her, you know, I had been praying, like I had been praying and fasting. Like I was serious about God at, at that point. Mm-hmm. And I'd been praying and fasting, asking for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And um, the enemy was trying to convince me that had all that I had done in my past that like I had um, forfeited a chance that opportunity mm-hmm. and I was just like man like that's not what I'm reading like the Bible says that Jesus mm-hmm. is the one that baptizes the Holy Spirit and he gives good gifts and so um, I remember just really earnestly Michelle like I probably prayed for maybe like six months like praying and fasting not non-stop fasting but mm-hmm. periods of fasting and mm-hmm. praying like every time the altar was open I was going down and I'm praying Lord I would like to be baptized in the Holy Spirit I love that gift and um I, I, I can just remember uh, the Sunday that it, it happened on a Sunday, and that night before, um, Karen's like, well, you know, Jeremy, have you made your decision? I was like, well, you know, I, I want to say yes, but I would like this to happen first just so I have that power to pray over people. And um, she's like, well, I think it's going to happen for you tomorrow. And I was like, well, okay, <laughs> sounds good to me. And uh, <laughs> I can remember I was serving as an usher that time, and so like I totally even missed the altar call. Pastor Paul was preaching on on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I missed the altar call because I was serving serving as an usher. And I was like, man, Lord, There's like, my opportunity. yeah, like Lord, like what's going on? I missed my opportunity. And then so there was just a moment, like at the very end, like I snuck in the back. And I saw Pastor Bud was standing down at the altar. He didn't have anybody with him. I went down, and he had prayed with me before, so he knew what I was coming for. And he looked at me, and I said, Pastor Bud, I'd like to ask again for the Lord to baptize me in the Holy Spirit. And I think he was just fed up with me at this point, because he had prayed, he had probably prayed four or five times for me to receive, and I had not received. And he looked at me, Michelle, and I can't remember what he said, but I remember he took his hand, not hard, but he kind of just jabbed at, my, jabbed at me in my stomach. And the second that his hand hit my stomach, this I, I I fell out in the spirit. It wasn't I, I and I'm I'm one of those like I ain't going down. Like <laughs> if the Lord don't put me down, I'm yeah. not you're not yeah. touching me and I'm not falling out, yeah. like unless it's yeah. God. But I had no control over my legs. I felt this energy streaming through my body and I had this language. Uh-huh. And um uh, like just receiving that baptism changed my life. You know, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people, you know, especially in today's society, you know, they try to write it off or say the gift's not for today, but me praying in that because whenever i came to the lord in 2016 some things he broke off my life instantly Mm -hmm. and some things i still struggled with Mm -hmm. but i have noticed that having that praying in the spirit edifying myself it is such a powerful tool Mm -hmm. but that is something that just really that really marked my marked me that i'll never forget is really marked and then another thing is um do we have time for another thing yeah okay cool uh so i joined um I joined the jail ministry team. So we would go down to Muscogee County Jail on Sunday afternoons at 2 o'clock and minister to the inmates. And just going down there and sharing my faith, I remember going in, I will just never forget this, I remember going in one Sunday and my buddy and I, you know, we were like, we wanted to go to like the, the tough area, The we wanted to go to the mental floor, nobody, everybody was scared to go up there, but we were full of the Holy Spirit, we wanted to go to the mental floor. And I remember walking in this dorm. And this guy walks up, and his eyes are completely crossed. He's demon-possessed. And he looked at me, and he said, 
this is my kingdom. And I was just like, oh no. Like, what have I done? <laughs> what have I done? And my partner didn't hear him. He, my partner was talking to somebody else. And he walked over and just hugged the guy. And from the second he hugged the guy, like, he was so subdued. Like, his eyes kind of straightened. And he just sat and participated in our in our, our study. And I was just like, wow. Like, just knowing, just like, realizing that, like, how the power of light is so much greater than the power of darkness. Mm -hmm. Like we went into the darkest spot and just seeing the power of God and the love of God, how it changed that environment. Like, and it, it also gave me a taste. Like once you experience like that miraculous side of God and just like use your gifts for outreach and minister to others, it changes something in you. Like I believe we were, we were all created um, you know, to, to for for ministry in some form or fashion, mm -hmm. and uh, just getting to experience that, you know, it was it just it really marked me. Yeah, that's powerful, and you know, just what you were saying, just um, I had a thought, and it, it just kind of left me. Okay. <laughs> Let me think of what it was. Okay. Um. Oh, changing the atmosphere. Yeah. So, um, one of my other podcast guests, Princess, she was saying. Like, we have so many people in churches today. Yes. Like, so many people. We have the power of God within us. Yes. When we walk into Walmart, the atmosphere in Walmart ought to change. Yes. And she's like, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, we're not exercising that power. Right. And so, just like you said, you walked into that room and you saw the atmosphere change. change. Like... That is the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's the power that we cling to yes. and that he's given us power. Greater things will you do because I go to the Father. That's right. And I'm sending the Holy Spirit to you. That's right. You know, and so that that is so powerful. And, you know, I think a lot of times people don't really understand the power of demonic forces either. Yeah. And just the fact that it wasn't. You know, you don't know what happened when your friend hugged that guy. Right. In the spiritual. That's right. You know, to your friend and to that guy, it was just a hug. But there was a lot of power in the spiritual realm that sat that demon down. Yes. Amen. <laughs> like, it didn't even have to have the name of Jesus over it because it was the power of Jesus. And that demon recognized who you represented yes yes, <laughs> yes you know and so i just think that is so powerful, so powerful and something that you definitely can refer back to yes you know anytime you come against a demonic force like that you know that power that's within you yes and i've, I've seen it manifest in one other time mm -hmm. so like i'm not out looking for demons by any means but uh, <laughs> yeah. for whatever reason I, I had a similar situation and um yeah, the same. The, oddly enough, the same thing happened though. It's like almost the person was restrained; like they were not able, you know, to to harm anyone or anything mm -hmm. else. And a group of us prayed over the person, and we actually began. It wouldn't leave, and we began to sing over the person. Uh, we were just singing hallelujah, and uh, it 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 really it left. So wow. yeah, yeah. But the power, right. like I think you're right, Michelle. I think people don't. I don't, I don't think people understand, you know, just the power that lives inside of mm -hmm. us, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and I also don't think people understand just how badly the world needs, you know, those witnesses to share that love and, and yeah. that power with them, yeah. you know. And sometimes it is just sharing love. That's it. You know, um, you can see somebody and just one word can change the yes. whole course of their day yes a smile can change the whole course right. of their day and so it doesn't take anything um huge and supernatural sometimes it's just a kind word that shifts the direction of their day absolutely that shifts the atmosphere um you know somebody could be having a totally bad day and you can just look at them and say how are you today yep you noticed you know you, you noticed them yep and sometimes that's all it takes to change somebody's day yeah you know going into the, you know having an opportunity you know to do that jail ministry like those guys just feel you know they're just they, they're so desperate and they're so um they're so lost and they just feel written off by society but just to your point just come in there and just 
just be con being consistent with them just even just mm -hmm. saying hey guys like I'm going to commit to be here every Sunday if you'll come and just listen to me as yeah. bad of a preacher as I am I'm going to come <laughs> in here and share um, yeah. yeah just we would it would just changes everything for yeah. those guys yeah and you know people just want to be seen and, and heard and felt understood yes. and you don't have to have the answer you know the only answer you have to have is Christ. That's right. <laughs> you know, you don't have to have the answer to the problem, the answer to the situation, just Christ. That's and, it. and as you share Him, you know, it changes the trajectory of their life if they will surrender like you did. That's right. Just sharing our story is so powerful. Well, what's next for Jeremy? What's what's next on the horizon for you? Oh man, you know, I uh I'm just really excited about you know what the Lord is uh, allowing me to do. Um, I, I just feel like He's positioned me where I'm at. Like I believe right now, my current calling is just like I enjoy funding mis uh, ministry work, mm -hmm. and so He's positioned me in a place where He's allowed me to do that, and it's so much fun. And so I'm just partnered with uh, just so many like a lot of missionaries, and then I still do some you know a lot of personal ministry. But uh, yeah, I'm just super excited. I just I love being a dad. It's so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, so I really enjoy that. I'm so excited to see Joshua. I just want him just to go. So you know, I think that's every parent's dream is just to see their kid go so much farther. So I'm so excited to see where he goes in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has such a little heart for ministry already, and it's just mm -hmm. it's precious for me to see. But yeah, I'm just excited about the future. I'm just excited to see just what my life looks like redeemed and just mm -hmm. all the opportunities. You know, I just I always just feel like I'm like the least qualified person to own a business or serve on a board or do anything. But it's just incredible if you surrender uh, your life to the Lord, what he'll do and the opportunities that he'll give you. So mm -hmm. I'm just blown away by it. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, you said you're in construction. What is your construction business? What do so, you do? So what we really do is steel construction. So we do like a lot of... Uh, we do a lot of uh, handrails and guardrails, cable rail. If you've ever been like in a parking garage and seen the cable rail system that mm -hmm. keeps cars and people from going off the edge, we engineer, supply, and install that. And we work all over the place, all the way from Texas to the Carolinas to Florida. We probably have 80 jobs going on mm -hmm. right now. So the Lord has really blessed it. He positioned with me. So there were three of us that started the business. And uh, one of the guys that, that really financed it, um, he was just a strong believer, mm -hmm. and he just, he, you know, he just, he really taught me, uh, you know, just financial responsibility, and just to be how, you know, how if you're generous with the Lord, that He'll truly bless you. He'll open the doors of heaven and mm -hmm. fill, you know, more than your storehouse can contain. Mm -hmm. And like I've, I've seen that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just would encourage anybody that is, you know, struggling, you know, with with that, just to trust the Lord with your finances because He will do it for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He's. He's good to, to his word. Yeah. My granddaddy always said, I live in God's economy. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you know, he's like, that's so I true. Just, yeah, you cannot outgive God. Yeah, that's so true. And like, yeah. even now, like in this current, you know, environment that we're in where things are slowing down and everybody's, you know, wringing their hands and trying to figure out what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Like, we're as busy as we've ever been. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's the Lord. And I just tell people that all the time, you know, there's. It's nothing really special about me other than I just decided to trust in the Lord. And I'm going to yeah. say, Lord, I know you're going to honor your word, right. so I'm going to be obedient to what you're telling me to yeah. do. Yeah, that's yeah. so good. Well, i like to ask my guests three questions. Okay. If you could only have one scripture, what would it be? Mm. I think... I think it would be... That if, if anyone is in Christ, they're a new creation. Yeah, I think that's, uh, oh goodness. Second Corinthians 5, 17. 17, 17. Yeah, 5, maybe 17. 17, yeah. 17. So yeah, I think that's, I just, I think that's my favorite just because I'm just such a new creation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so, and when the enemy tries to come against me, mm -hmm. I kind of shared earlier, you know, that, you know, sometimes that, you know, he'll bring that shame and guilt. Mm -hmm. And I just tell him like, hey man, I'm a new creation. Like, that's right. whoever you're talking to, that person doesn't that's even right. exist anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I, I shared one time a friend of mine had preached and she was preaching on God's grace uh -huh. and she said, we all have a closet of our past sins. Yeah. And the enemy likes to go in that closet and bring things out and show you. Yeah. But 
God, he's like, I don't even know what that is. Right. You know? And so to that point, yes. like, you just tell him, like, I don't know what you're talking That's about. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's under the blood. That's All I it. see is the blood, just Amen. like my heavenly father sees. Amen. So. And I think it's so powerful that, you know, the God promises to choose not to remember our sin. Right. It's not that he forgets that we right. sin, but he makes a choice not to remember. It's yeah. just like, wow, that is incredible love. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, when somebody does something to us, we might forgive them, but we like to bring it back up. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, in those opportune moments, that's we it. like to say, don't you remember when yep. that happened? <laughs> yeah, that's right. But that's so good, you yeah. know, that God chooses not to remember Not to that. remember. So yeah, powerful. I love that. Second question, are you a coffee drinker, a tea drinker, or you know, neither? Okay, so I love coffee and tea. My wife is a coffee connoisseur. Like, mm -hmm. she'll tell you who has good coffee, who has bad coffee, this and that. Um, I, I do enjoy coffee, but I think I like the taste. Like, it just makes me very jittery. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was a season where I was drinking a ton of coffee, and I do enjoy it. Uh, I love a good sweet tea, too. Now, I'm a yeah. country boy, <laughs> so I love a good sweet tea. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, I do. I enjoy coffee. Just I don't drink it very frequently. Mm -hmm. It just kind of makes me a little jittery. Yeah. So. Are you a lemon in your tea guy? Um. You know, Joshua is steals the lemon off my tea. Okay. For whatever reason, he <laughs> loves lemon. So yeah. anytime there's a lemon sitting around, if you want it, you better dunk it quick. Because yeah. if not, he's grabbing it and eating it, which is totally weird to me. But hey, whatever. <laughs> you know. So. Yeah, my my friends' kids love lemons. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to know because if I'm out to eat with you, That's I don't it. like lemons in my tea. Okay. Well. So I'll be like Josh. Want yeah. My lemon? <laughs> yeah, he'll take it. He will absolutely <laughs> take it. All right. Third question: If you could go anywhere in the world, where would your dream wow. vacation be? You know, I really, I really want to go on a Holy Land trip. Yeah. Like I'm going to make that happen. Yeah. I've had some opportunities and just hadn't worked out. And then during COVID, we were kind of enter entertaining the idea. But I like I just really want to um, do that as a family and just like just walk like physically walk in the steps of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like I think that would be so cool. So that would be my number one. And then number two, uh, if somebody could get me on Augusta National, where the Masters is held, <laughs> I guess that would be just right behind the yeah, Holy Land yeah. trip. So that would be my, my two dream trips. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I love that. I, I want to go to Israel, too. I, I've never have been? been. Okay, I have never been. been. Mm -mm. That's on my list. Yeah, me too. Um, and kind of like you, like I would love for my whole family to go. Oh, like yeah. none, none of my family have been. Yeah. So I would love for my mom and... You know, um, my mom and stepdad and my aunt and uncles. I would love for them yeah. to go. I say nobody in my family has been. My uncle Sanford and his wife Mildred have been. Okay. They went um, probably about. Uh, they probably went about ten years, uh, twelve years ago, probably. Okay. Twelve, twelve to fifteen years ago, they went. A person. He was my pastor, and a lady in our church wanted to go, but was physically not able. And she paid for my uncle and aunt. Oh, how cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So. Were, that, were they impacted by the trip? I just hear people yeah. are just like so yeah. impacted deeply by mm -hmm. just yeah. being just in the land. Right. I mean, it's a, la a covenantal land. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they were, it was just incre an incredible trip yeah, for them. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah trip of a lifetime for sure that's cool yeah. well thank you for being my guest yeah, today so much. Um, i know that your story will impact so many people and and that you're i just love that you're continuing to to walk in ministry and yeah you know like you said we all have a ministry yeah <laughs> we just have to find where god wants us to be and that's right we can we don't have to be preachers we don't have to be music you know worship leaders to be ministers that's right like we are ministers every day yeah. so yeah and to your audience i mean don't give up on your prodigals like if i could say something yeah. just in closing just like i was a prodigal and i was just headed in the opposite direction but don't give up because you know one day they're gonna they're, they're gonna come over that hill yeah and just be there to greet them so yeah. just don't give up praying for your for your lost children and so lost good. family members because your prayers matter your prayers have weight god hears mm -hmm. them and god sees them so yeah amen. the answer's on the way even when you don't see it amen yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for tuning in to the Hope, Health, and Healing podcast. I know that Jeremy's story has encouraged your heart today and given you some hope that no matter what you're walking through, no matter where you find yourself on your own journey of faith, that God is right there with you, that He is just waiting on you to surrender 
that last thing to him so that he can take you into the life that he has for you, that abundant life. So join me next week as my friend Katie Clampett shares her journey of faith. Katie's story begins as a preacher's kid, what it looked like to grow up in church, embracing the life of a Christian and what that looks like to walk that out and what it looked like for her entering into college and walking away for a short time, not really fully embracing the life of a Christian that she grew up with simply because she was questioning her fate Was it just because of what her family believed or was it what she really believed and how God was gracious and walked her through that journey, how he directed her steps when she really didn't even realize that's what was happening and how God was merciful even through her mom's battle with cancer. She also shares her journey with her husband through infertility, how her daughter's birth was such a blessing in a dark time. So join us next week for some more encouragement and inspiration. Be sure to like and share this podcast with your friends and family and follow us on social media.